guys, welcome back to my channel. You're probably here to make this composition pencil notebook paper scribble tumbler. But before we start, I just wanted to tell you that I ended up making But before we start, before we start, I just want to tell you that I realized after watching the video back and after making the tumbler, I realized that there are some parts that I made a little bit more difficult than they actually needed to be like in the tumbler making process. So when I do my voiceover to explain how to do it, my hands are going to be doing something different, but I'm going to tell you an easier way to make this. It's very simple things, so it won't be, you won't be lost. And if you are, leave me a comment. Um, I, I always check on Saturdays. Saturday's the day where that I'm check the comments the most since it's the day that I launched the video, but leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, if you enjoy my content, please hit that like and subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. It would help me so much and enjoy this video. That's it. That's all I have to say for right now. And you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you for being here. Also, if you're new, if this is your first time here, I would just like to apologize in advance. Eh. I was going to try to lie to you and tell you that I'm normal, but I'm not. I'm not. I'll just show you myself now so that you know, okay? But thank you for being here. We're going to sand our tumbler first and remove that protective glossy finish that is there to protect the stainless steel because we don't want to re it to repel any of the beautiful things we're going to put on it, right? We want a long lasting product. So we're going to sand it and then we're going to take a paper towel with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just wipe all the residue off. You know, let it dry. It dries really fast. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and move on to our very next step. We're going to flip it upside down and we're going to measure the very bottom. The reason I do this is because that's how I find the center of the tumbler. And that's how I know exactly where I am in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a long piece of painter's tape and I'm going to put it down the bottom, but I'm going to leave long en enough pieces to go down both sides of the tumbler. Does that make sense? Like what I'm saying to you? Of course it does. Cause you're looking at what I'm doing. <gasps> Duh, this is so confusing. Okay. I'll get, I'll get better. So basically what I do is I put the tape at the bottom of the tumbler and then run the long pieces of the side down. Um, just so that I have an even measurement straight and, you know, split the cup in half. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take measuring tape and I'm going to put it on one side of the tumbler for the tape begins and ends on both sides, right? Because I want to know the exact center of that spot. So I'm going to take a little marker and I'm going to mark off the little centerpiece. And the reason we're doing that is because we want the very tippity tip of our pencil to be right in the center so that it looks good and symmetrical. You know what I'm saying? Not crooked like my eyebrows. Okay, so then I'm going to take washi tape. Oh, let me dry off this sweat. So then I'm going to take some washi tape and I am going to just put it the way you see me doing in the video. Why am I trying to explain? You're a little looking. Oh, this is so hard to get used to. Okay. So I am going to take my washi tape and I'm going to form it into a V and I'm going to make sure that the very tippity top of the V is right where the, where the dot with the marker that we made is so that I know that it's at the very center. Okay. And for those of you who, who know me really well, you know that I hate the Cricut. I hate cutting machines. So in this video, you're going to see me improvise a lot because I did everything I possibly could to not have to use a cutting machine. But if you want to cut yourself stencils, you absolutely can. I did it the hard way because I didn't want to use my Cricut. So after I sectioned that part off, I painted it white with acrylic paint. This is where you should do things a little bit differently than I did. But because I was experimenting, I didn't even think about an easier way to do it. So here you see me cutting the piece of paper, um, which is cardstock, by the way, not cardstock. It's um, scrapbook paper. Um, here you see me like cutting it. And this is the part where I realize what I'm, I'm so dumb. Like, why didn't I realize in this moment here? I'm trying to find where the very tip of the V is so that I can cut the paper. Like, why did I not just apply this whole piece of paper the way it is and just glitter over it. Oh my gosh. Honestly, this is kind of embarrassing. Um, because you guys are here. Oh no. Somebody said in a group today that they hit they hate when YouTubers say, um, okay. So let me try to not say it. So then oh, I was about to say it. So then instead of cutting it in the V like I am, because that's ridiculous. That is way too much work. Don't do that. Just take that little rectangle piece 
and just go ahead and apply it. Now I am going to be using poly liquid polycrylic from Lowe's. The brand is Minwax. I'm going to be using that. I'm probably going to pop it up somewhere in this video, but I don't know which way to point because I don't know where I'm going to be and where the picture is going to be, but like this is it. So do a very thin coat, do like a little section and then apply your scrapbook paper and take your booger hooks and just rub it in and then just kind of hold it down a little bit because um, hold it there while the polycrylic is drying, which is super duper fast, especially if you do a thin coat. Okay, and now I know you guys saw me painting white first where I'm gonna put the scrapbook paper and that's because scrapbook paper, you're gonna get it a little bit wet, obviously, to apply it and it becomes a little bit translucent and you know, it's kind of like when you use white glitter. You're not gonna apply white glitter over a stainless steel base. You want that white base to get that like bright white color. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do white underneath where you're going to put your scrapbook paper and please ignore the fact that I cut this little piece of paper into a V. I should have just done the rectangle. If you're watching this, please just do the rectangle. And the reason I removed the painter's tape from both sides of the cup is because we're going to seal this and I didn't want to seal the tape and not be able to rip it off, but we're going to come back and reapply our tape later. So what you see me doing here is you see me taking my booger hooks and just pushing the edges of that scrapbook paper down. I want to make sure that it's completely adhered to that tumbler and that no epoxy is going to get underneath there because if it does, it's gonna get your scrapbook paper wet. It's gonna compromise the integrity of the cup. So you wanna really make sure that you're pushing those edges down so that you know that that like scrapbook paper is really on there. Then we're gonna go back up to the rim. You guys saw me cutting it with scissors a minute ago. All you do is go around the rim. Oh my gosh, now you know what my face looks like when I do that. <gasps> okay. <clears throat> so the rim is very important because if we don't seal it properly, whenever you finish your beautiful cup and you wash it, if it's not sealed, water is going to get underneath that scrapbook paper and it's going to be ruined. But don't let that scare you. No, 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 no. Just do what I'm doing here. Okay, take a flat edge paintbrush, dip it into that polycrylic and just stick it in between the the paper and the the stainless steel and then use your booger hooks to push it against the stainless steel until you can tell that it's completely adhered and that there's no space in between okay after you do that you're going to take a thin coat of polycrylic thin like me and you're going to seal your scrapbook paper you're going to let this dry it dries pretty quickly. You can use a blow dryer. I don't like using heat guns to dry things because heat guns apply a lot of heat. And what if it melts off my face? I don't know, but I don't want to. So I like using blow dryers. So I did three coats, let them completely dry. And then what I'm doing here is I'm taking a little bit of UV resin and protecting that scrapbook paper. Number one, because it's paper. Number two, because it's white. And we still have so much stuff to do to this tumbler. I do not want to ruin the hard work that we just did. So just take a little bit of UV resin and protect it. You know what I'm saying? Now, this UV light that you see right here, girlfriend, it'll cure your diarrhea. Listen. I was messing with a way smaller one before, and I was like, yeah, you have to hold it under for like seven minutes. That's what I thought until I got this light. Like, man, this this really, this this could cure your, like literally, it, it'll cure your problems. So highly recommend. It's gonna be linked in the description. It's only like 36 bucks. Oh man, it's amazing. So now look at it. So glossy, so beautiful. It's dry to the touch. Why? Why is it dry to the touch? Because that freaking light will cure your freaking runny nose i'm telling you right now all right what we're gonna do is this is where we're gonna come back in and apply our painter's tape back because we want those crisp sharp lines you know what i mean just like daddy yankee that crisp sharp line on his forehead with his haircut you know what i'm saying that's how sharp we want our lines to be also don't come for me i love daddy yankee so i'm gonna go ahead and take a take two pieces of tape and i'm gonna form a v above the scrapbook paper. But if you notice, I went just a little bit above the paper. That's because I want the lines of that pencil to be sharp. 
like my shank. Okay, I'm just kidding. Then I taped it off and I did black glitter on the tip, right? And what you see me doing here is some crazy wildness. I literally used washi tape and the, the two lines that I did, I did it so that the, the points would be like the same distance apart. But basically all you need to do is print a zigzag, a, a zigzag SVG and put it right there and then save yourself some time. I hate using the Cricut machine. I hate doing all of that stuff because Cricut freaking sucks. And let's be honest, I'm not gonna learn silhouette. So I avoid cutting at all costs. Wow, I sound so negative. Oh, look at me, negative Nancy. But if you, you know, just look for like a chevron zigzag SVG, I'll link one. Um, you could just cut it out of vinyl, place it there, and that'll help guide you. And so basically what we're doing now is we're doing the this part of the pencil right here. So this is why you want that zigzag, okay? And you can use any gold glitter that you want. Of course, I'm gonna link this. This one is called Goddess. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and here you see me peeling all the washi tape contraptions that I did. Normally, my YouTube tutorials are not this complicated. Also, when I was making this tumbler, I was experimenting. I had no idea how, was, how it was gonna turn out, how I was gonna make this come to life. So I do apologize that my tutorials aren't always this complicated to follow. I'm so sorry. Like I said, um, I'll, I'll link an SVG that looks like this so that you could just boom, cut it and put it on there. So now what you see me doing is going in with some pink pop of color. You can use, um, you know, Mod Podge with a little bit of pink paint. You could use uh, chalk paint if you want to. You also saw me make a mistake there. Oh my Lanta, what am I doing on YouTube? Who am I kidding? I accidentally glittered all the way to the bottom. Luckily, I caught my mistake, so I took a paper towel and whippity wiped the glitter off of right here. And then I went in with double-sided tape and I laid my line right here. And then as you can see, I left a teeny tiny itty bitty space above so that I could have a sharp line. And then I just went back in over it and filled with this glitter right here. So basically I did double-sided tape and then I peeled off the backing and I splinkered sleigh bells. La, 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 It does not have to be Christmas to use sleigh bells because it's a beautiful silver. Oh gosh, I hope you cannot hear those kids screaming outside. Haters would say I'm in my garage, but I'm not. I'm in a filming studio in New York City. Yep, those were kids screaming. Okay, sorry. Sorry about my great dollar value tutorial, but I hope you're still having fun and I hope you're learning, you know what I'm saying? Like if you learn after this, like who cares if I'm a Dollar Tree, which version of a teacher, you know what I'm saying? You had fun. Okay, so what I do is I take the glitter, I put it on the double-sided tape, take my booger hook and like, like push it down to make sure it really gets on there. And then once I knew that I had full coverage over this little strip right here, which is supposed to be the metal piece on the pencil, um, I went ahead and I used um, Pop of Color, did neon pink glitter right here for the eraser, okay? And after I was done with this, I brushed off like, I. ooh, look at that. Satisfying. Tumblr only fans content. After I was done with that, I peeled off the tape and I went in with a flat edge brush, like my booty. I mean, it's just what life dealt me. And I went ahead and I covered the entire other side of the tumbler with that pop of color. And you would be surprised. I didn't have to do a second coat of that confetti, which is crazy. But if you feel like you have a few naked spots, you can take a little bit of Mod Podge and a paintbrush and just put a little bit of Mod Podge in the naked areas and add a little bit of confetti so that you're not stuck doing two coats because if you do two coats, man, that's gonna be really hard to cover with epoxy. So just do, just do that, you know, do what I'm doing and then just go in with a little bit of Mod Podge and fill in those areas. You know what I'm saying? It's fine, it's a cup, it's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. So I sprinkled, look at that. Ooh, she touched my tra-la-la. My ding, ding, dong. Oh my God, is that inappropriate? I, I just saw a TikTok with that sound. And so I don't know why that's what came to my head. In my defense, I did tell YouTube that my channel is not for children. So I did my due diligence. Okay, so now after this, what you wanna do is you wanna take your busted can of biscuits looking ass hand and you wanna ta -da 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 -da, like this, ta -da 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 like pat down the glitter, make it lay flat like my booty. 
You can also take parchment paper and then like press it down. After you do that, you're gonna seal your glitter like you normally would seal it. I use polycrylic spray, I will link it. And then I went in with 40 mLs of epoxy and I let that cure overnight. And then I did another 30 mLs of epoxy because you need pretty good coverage, you know, over some chunk, hey, over some chunks. At, look at that epoxy. Okay, queen, straight up glass, bro. Like Johnny QR on TikTok says, straight up glass. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That's brighter than my future. Yes, queen. Listen, hype yourself up when you're making cups. Hype yourself up. You are a queen or a king. You know what I'm saying? Why can't you be like, yes, queen, I'm a queen. You're a queen. Yes, queen. Look at that shine. Okay, so we're going to move on from this. Oh, sorry, I got to it's not a booger. It was just an itch. So after this, I did do a little bit of light sanding. I very rarely have to sand my cups. Oh my God, que mamona. Like I never have to sand my cups. I hate how I just sand. Please ignore that. If you're new here, ignore that. Okay. But I did go in and sand this. Okay. How, why is nothing moving? Sorry about that guys. Hey, at least I was talking. I sanded it lightly. I wiped it down. Look at these acrylic drawers with all my washi tape. I know. Makes me feel like I really have my life together, but I don't. I really don't. Um, I believe I got these drawers at Hobby Lobby, but you can find so much stuff on Amazon. Girl, let me tell you. Then I took some washi tape. Once again, I hate the Cricut machine. I hate having to weed vinyl. I hate having to cut vinyl. So I find ways around it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I bought, oh, did I say um again? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a cheap YouTuber. I'm so sorry. So I like using washi tape because it saves me time and I have a, an abundance of options. All of this washi tape is from Amazon with the ex exception of a few that I got at the Hobby Lobby, but most of it is from Amazon. You'll be surprised how much you find. So after I applied my vinyl strips and cut them with a little X-Acto knife on the edges, I took my decal, which I don't want to brag, but it was custom made by my best friend, that little logo lady. I knew I wanted my notebook to be just a little bit different, like my eyebrows, you know? So that's why I was like, girl, I want a Batty University one. You know what I'm saying? And I want it to be pink so it can match the aesthetic of my cup. And she really came through. Of course, I'm going to link her website so that you can go buy this from her. Um, she's amazing. I said, um, again, <sighs> maybe I should just quit YouTube. Maybe I should just quit YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's annoying. Who wants to sit here and ugh. what I do when I apply my decals, I like to stand my tumbler straight up because that's the best way for me to tell if it's straight or not. I used to just lay my tumbler fat on those flat, <laughs> fat. <laughs> I used to lay my tumbler flat on a little like pool noodle thing, but I never got my decals straight. But when you set your tumbler flat on the table, you really get to see what it's going to look like and it, you just get a better, better visual. So what I do when I apply printable vinyl is I slowly peel the backing and I I'm push my finger back and forth and work out all of those air bubbles. Printable vinyl, you do not have to seal. As a matter of fact, I don't recommend sealing it because most likely it'll make the ink run. So just leave it alone, okay? Oh, look at me, cool little rock star. In my Patreon group, we are learning how to use Procreate to make our own decals. Now I know this is not like, I know anybody could do this part, but I just wanted to show you like my skills, like ta -ta -ta, look at me tapping with my pencil. Also, I will be coming back with some other designs that I made, so zone. But basically, I got this font from dafont.com. It says teach. So cute. I love it. And I put it right where the line goes, almost like if you were writing on a notebook. And then what I did was I took an alcohol ink marker and I drew a swiggly line so that it looked like my pencil wrote the word teach. So freaking cute, right? So cute. Of course, I'm gonna link these markers. I did not have to seal the marker either. I let it dry and bada bing, went straight to the epoxy. Now, after this, I sealed it with 40 mLs of epoxy, 20 parts of A, 20 parts of B, let it spin overnight, and that's it. I'm sorry this tutorial was a mess, and if you liked it, I'll see you next Saturday. 
Besitos.